Okay, in this section I'm going to talk about um, pitot-static tubes, um, their operation and the theory behind them. Okay, so firstly, um, you can look at this picture here. Um, this is a picture of uh, pitot-static tubes. You can see it's a tube um, kind of bent with a 90 degree um, bend here. And what it is, is it's effectively a pipe within a pipe. So you can see this hole um, on the center line here. And on the outside, you can see these um, so-called uh, static pressure holes. And if you look at the schematic here, you can see that the um, center um, hole or tube um, goes all the way around and connects to one side, the manometer. Then this outer tube um, with the static pressure holes, this kind of sleeve is connected to the other end of the manometer. So how does this work? Well, um, if we remember Bernoulli's, okay, so the theory is over here. Bernoulli's made up of three terms, the static pressure, dynamic pressure, and our potential or hydrostatic pressure term. And the sum of those is the total pressure, and the sum of these two, um, the static and the dynamic, is the stagnation pressure. And this all equals a constant. So if we apply this to our um, pitot-static tube here, then we can see that this is horizontal. So... Um, for this pilot tube, um, Z1 equals Z2, so that would cancel from each side. But notice here that for the um, fluid that's flowing into the centre tube, then eventually this fluid is going to come to rest because it's, it's going to has velocity out here. It's going to come into this tube, but as it comes in here, it's going to it's going to stop because it's got nowhere to go. So therefore, C2 is zero. Um, so Bernoulli's will also reduce to this because the dynamic pressure term will disappear for um, uh, this side because obviously C is equal to zero. So therefore, the um, on the outside, the um, static pressure um, at one it, um, plus the dynamic pressure is equal to the static pressure at two because the fluid has come to rest. So what we're saying is if we look at this um, pressure differential here, so P1 minus, uh, sorry, P2 minus P1, that is equal to the um, dynamic pressure at one, okay, which is um, a function of velocity. So we can use this device to measure the velocity in the flow by knowing what the pressure differential is. So you can see here we've rearranged it to make C1 um, the subject. So it's equal to that pressure differential um, divided by um, density times by two. And of course, that pressure differential is a function of um, the manometer liquid. So it'd be rho g, um, rho m, sorry, g times hp. And that'd be the pressure difference here. So, so the, these devices are quite commonly used, actually, to measure um, velocity rather than mass flow rate, because you can stick them. They're quite easy to mount and they will measure the velocity. So here's a couple of instances where they're used. So you can see on this um, aircraft here, and you might have seen these yourself um, at the airport, you can see these pitot-static tubes sticking out the front of the plane. And these are to measure the air velocity um, relative to the aircraft um, when it's in the air. So therefore, you can get the aircraft speed from that. And here's an example of um, a Red Bull Formula One team uh, using this in in the test. So the car wouldn't obviously race like this, but this is a test. And on here, what's called an aero rake. So you can see here they've got a large matrix of pitot-static tubes um, connected, um, suspended from this car, and they will use this to look at to measure the actual velocity at each point, and then compare this to their CFD simulations into their wind tunnels and to see whether their um, simulation is okay or whether they need to make any, so they can basically validate their models from this. So although the pitot-static tube looks quite clunky um, technology, it is quite widely used.